Okay, my name is Jessica Curtaz, and I'm a teaching artist with Mainline Art Center's Accessible Art Program. And the talk I'm going to be giving today, I've entitled Creating Through Collaboration, Empowering Visually Impaired Students Through Tactile Art. I'm briefly going to discuss Mainline Art Center's uh, history with working with visually impaired communities. I'm gonna talk about establishing the relationship with the Overbrook School for the Blind, as well as what it took to create a program that fosters independence, as well as facilitates cooperation through collaborative tactile art public projects. So first of all, uh, Mainline Art Center started their relationship with the blind and visually impaired in 1965. We started a sculpture program with the Center for the Blind and Visually Impaired in Chester. Um, over the years, that relationship has changed. Both organizations have changed their name repeatedly. But about 20 years ago, we see, received a generous donation from a patron that allowed us to create a semi-permanent program. So we now go in there once a week and we have a wide range of participants. They range from 18 years to I think my oldest um, participant is 94. And we cater primarily to a group that lost their sight uh, later in life. So here are some great pictures from that. I just think like I always love what everybody is able to make there. We always have new students coming in. There's about 25 um, regular students. The woman in the right hand top corner in the pink shirt is named Carol Saylor. And she is a visually impaired um, artist. And we have her come in to give as a visiting artist um, once, once a year. Um, and so I think it's great that she can really relate to the participants and they can really relate to her work because it is meant to be so tactile. So coming from this background, we developed a relationship with Susan DeFabio in I think 2017. So she took over the art program at the Overbook School for the Blind. She was working in as an elementary school teacher before that point, but she obviously has training in the arts. And when she took over though, she wanted to broaden her background in what she was teaching. And so she started taking clay classes at Mainline Art Center, as well as volunteering with my weekend classes for kids, teens, and adults with developmental disabilities. And through her relationship with us then, we were able to get some funding through actually the same donor that funds our work in Chester in order to create a multi-tiered program at Overbrook. So it was a six month residency where we would go in, um, teach both techniques and terminology. So you know, how to slip and score, what is a pinch pot, what is slab construction, what is a kiln, what's the process. Um, we wanted to adapt projects to this community. It's multiple ages, first through 12th grade, as well as multiple abilities. Um, several of the students have multiple diagnoses, so it's not just a visually impaired audience, um, but in several cases, uh, developmentally disabled as well. This owl that you see was one of our first projects. It was a pinch pot construction. So we would do the body of the owl with the kids. It was rolling the clay into a ball, sticking your thumb into the center of that ball in order to form like a thumb lollipop with clay on it. And once that ball was hollowed out so it was thin enough to be sent through the kiln without exploding. Um, the kids were able to add texture, add eyes, add their own details and make a really personalized project that they could then take home. And that was our goal with the first set of projects to cover a wide range of construction techniques and at the same time 
give all the kids something that they could invest in and they would get to keep. So with these plates and bowls, um, again, students rolled balls of clay in different sizes, would smash them with their fingers and then use various stamps, pieces of lace, pieces of cardboard, leaves to press into the clay in order to create these patterns. And with these as well, we also emphasize different glazing techniques. So things that were tactile glazing. So it wasn't just about adding color to eyes or different or stripes or dots or things that a visually impaired audience wouldn't be aware of, aware of but emphasizing the texture that's involved. So covering a piece in dark glaze, wiping it off with a sponge so that that glaze sets into the patterns and then dab sponging other colors over the tops of it. So we did pinch pot animals or I guess monsters where the pinch pots became the mouths. We did desserts based on the work of Wayne Tebow. Um, in all of these cases, I brought in examples, things for the kids to feel um, as before they started work. So they had an idea of what we were gonna be doing. And some of the work was done hand over hand and some of the kids are much more independent and just go right at it and explore with you know, very different and interesting results. This brought us to coil construction. So we started making vases with coils. And the first few of these projects were again, projects that we made for the kids to take home, to invest in it's things that they got to keep. But we wanted also to bring in this idea of public art, of art that you make for, for everyone, that you make as a collaboration. And so we started making large scale vessels that plants could be in that could be put around the school so that everybody in a classroom would be working on one or two of these large scale pieces. And they were even done across different classes. So one class might construct the majority of a piece and then another class would do some of the embellishments that go on a piece. Maybe they would do balls around the edge or make wafers that were stuck on the side. And we all tried to do that based on the class's ability and interest to make those aspects. Um, these are some of the finished ones. I think they look you know, extra fabulous. And we also did this in collaboration with their horticultural therapy program. So the kids planted these aloe plants in them they have a fabulous greenhouse there. And a lot of these pieces are in permanent places um, in that greenhouse and around the school. We also wanted to do a large scale collaborative piece, something that could live at the school forever, that could be in one of the courtyards. This current bench that you're looking at is actually a group piece that we did with the fifth grade at the Catherine School, um, a public school in West Philadelphia. And we wanted to adapt these techniques um, specifically for a visually impaired audience. We wanted it to be based on their farm to table program and their horticultural therapy program. And our goals were making the processes involved in making a bench really accessible and understandable. So this started with making templates for the tiles that would be used. And in a normal setting, we would have all the kids in a class work on the same imagery at the same time. We would use a copy machine to run off what those templates were. And after kids rolled out the clay, they would place the template on and trace around the clay, cutting it out with a skewer tool. Um, we really needed something that, that kids could feel that had a, a tactile presence. So we used cereal boxes for these templates. They're basically made out of a really thin Davy board and that laminate of the cover of the cereal box made it pretty waterproof. So that when we placed it on the clay, it didn't disintegrate and it could be reused through several classes. So we pretty much abandoned the idea of everybody working on the same element at the same time. 
and just narrow down different days to being like, this is our flower day, or this is the vegetable day. And that kids would make multiple pieces um, on multiple days. And along those lines, the original process, kids would make a single piece and they would glaze it in a single day. We wanted them to have agency and investment in their piece so that when it was in a public setting, they could recognize it, go up to it and say, I made that piece. And working on wet clay with a visually impaired audience um, for glazing, just it, it, isn't, it isn't accessible. It isn't something that you can easily do at all. It's really easy to put a paintbrush through that clay to, while you're trying to feel where the edges are, to change where those edges are. Um, you always want something to be of uniform thickness and just squishing it while you're trying to feel what you're doing was um, a challenge. So we, we just broke this up into two separate days. Kids would make the clay pieces, do the construction on one day, and then they would do the glazing on a totally separate day once the piece had been fired and was hard and could be felt without ruining it. Um, we also wanted to change the glazing then so that it wasn't just a simple like, oh, I'm gonna add some colors in this way. For a visually impaired audience, it became about doing something that was tactile and that would be easily felt after the fact as well. So that we wanted it to be um, something that they could feel those the different elements to after it was dry, after it was fired, and after it was put into its bench form. So that first day during construction, it became about not only cutting out the piece, well, not only rolling out the piece, which is its own challenge. We use dowels on the side of the clay so that everything stayed the same thickness, that kids were able to stand up and roll out the clay. Once they hit the dowels, they knew that everything was rolled out to the thickness that was, that was uniform of about a finger. And then they would choose their template. It was raised, they would trace around it and then follow that by drawing things into the surface, by uh, stamping other things into the surface or pressing lace, corrugated cardboard and other elements to create patterns. Once it was fired, they would again do that same process that I showed you back with those uh, wafer bowls where we put dark colors over the surface wiped those off of the raised areas, and then went back in and sponged a different color onto the surface. So here's some of the results. I think these carrots are extra cute. Um, like I said, all of these different like fruits and vegetables, stems, leaves, were things that we talked with the kids about ahead of time, um, decided on, so that we would have kind of a uniform overall feel to the bench that represented that farm to table program and horticultural, horticultural therapy program. We made an awful lot of tiles and the original idea was to do the bench construction as a team building project for the teachers and staff at Overbrook. Um, and that way the kids Although they wouldn't be participating in the mosaic part of it and the construction, they would be aware of its construction, that they could feel it while it was being, while things were being attached, while it went from being these simple tiles to a finished project. Unfortunately, uh, COVID hit right before we were able to do this. And the whole project was put on hold for about a year and a half. We kept hoping that we'd be allowed back in um, because of the, the nature of the program at Overbrook. There's a lot of aids. There's a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with the students. We were not only not allowed in, but it really, COVID really took its toll and uh, they were forced to go into a primarily virtual program for a long period of last year. Um, so as a result, um, I took it on to do the mosaic portion um, just a few months ago, just so that we could get this done and that the kids who made all of these tiles 
could be um, aware of the finished project so that it wouldn't be so removed from the making that everyone would forget the parts that they had done. So this, this is in process. And I mean, I, I admit that this is a lot of the fun part where you get to see everything come together. But our hope was that if we could finish this and get this back to the school, that maybe this would facilitate us getting back in at some point and doing another project where everybody could be more involved. So here I am grouting everything, doing an acid wash, and this is the finished product. And happily, we are going back into the school. I'm resuming uh, classes right after Thanksgiving. We'll be taking the bench back to the school at that time. It will be going into the courtyard outside of the art room. And we are starting a new public project there that is a ceramic mural project. So we're really thrilled to be back involved and hopefully this time to have the whole thing start to finish uh, facilitated by the students and staff at the school. Thanks.